Congress. All right, we are ready to go now. It will be Elizalde in his all gold singlet with blue trim and piping down the side, the B on front. Meanwhile, it's a gold singlet for Grubbs. It will be the red anklet for Elizalde, the green for Grubbs, and we are set to go here. It is the Masters Championship round, 103-pound division, and there's the whistle, and there they go, ready to go as each wrestler is starting to feel each other out. Todd Salkowski along with Jason Hendrick, and they tie up just to the right side of the mat. We are approximately 10 yards away from the wrestling mat, and it is scoreless here in the first period of action. Grubbs dips to his knees real quickly. Gets a quick sprawl out there by Elizalde. And the wrestlers are tied up right at the center. And there's a single leg shoot there by Grubbs. And it is quickly countered by Elizalde. Level change by Grubbs looks really nice. For a freshman, I I'm very impressed with him. Right out the get gate. Wrestlers tied up now. Filling each other out. Just to the right of the center circle. Now they, they are tied up and get to the middle of the circle. And it's, again, the Mohawk that we saw from Elizalde last week. A blonde Mohawk. And a nice little duck under there by Grubbs. And Grubbs gets the takedown. 2 nothing. Brian Grubbs with a textbook duck under there. Jason, the speed was remarkable. That was very fast, very slick. That was a very, very nice Patterson duck under. That was, that was very nice looking. Brian Grubbs leads 2 nothing after the takedown in the first period over Elizalde. Elizalde, the number one seed. Grubbs, the number two seed. Now it's Grubbs with... The, the legs in as he trying to work a half Nelson up top. 35 seconds to go in the first period of action. Todd Sokowski along with Jason Hedrick here on KBCSports.com. Your home for high school sports. And the referees quickly call a stalemate there as the legs are in. The half Nelson and wrestlers weren't getting anywhere there. And they will go back to a restart. It is Elizalde on the bottom. Grubbs will get on top with 26 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And there's a... Little tilt action there on the left side by Grubbs as again he slips in that leg underneath and working Elizalde who is now on the bottom. He's riding legs nice. This freshman looks very, very nice and composed here. I'm very, very impressed by him. Of course his pedigree can't hurt being a Grubbs. And there he's got a nice little tilt going there and spinning out of the tilt but it looks like he may have gotten back points. Did Grubbs get the back points? Nope. They're, They're not going to give him that. Briefly he turned over Elizalde, but no back points are awarded. So the first period will end with a score, Grubbs from LCC over Elizalde, by a score of 2 nothing. The coin flip comes up red, and it is going to be Elizalde's choice. He will defer, and it will now be Grubbs' choice, who will take the bottom position to begin the second period of action. So Grubbs on bottom, Elizalde on top. And there's the whistle, and trying to do a quick little... Uh, switch there is El uh, Grubbs and he does get up to his feet he tried to switch it didn't work but he did manage to create space gets up to his feet gets the escape it's now 3 nothing. Brian Grubbs deep single leg nice single leg by Grubbs and he's going to try and turn over and get the two point takedown but well countered by Elizalde there Jason yes he was trying to go deep in there for a high crotch but Elizalde defended it very very well and it looks like well nope he's going to stay stalemate here Elizalde trying to get a cross face in on Grubbs and trying to spin around and he does manage to spin around but then another counter there by Grubbs who avoids the two point takedown. Both wrestlers now back on their feet. Back on their feet and it's 3 nothing in the second period. One ten to go in the second period. The freshman Brian Grubbs leading 3 nothing. Now they're up. Standing. Middle of the circle. Rotating around each other. And there's a nice little ankle pick by Grubbs who got so low. And another takedown. Brian Grubbs leads 5 nothing. Jason, how in the world did he get that low? That was a very slick single leg pick. I mean, textbook single leg. Take and now down. he's driving, trying to get the back points. And Elizalde has got his head down on the mat as Grubbs has got the leg in. And he's working him over quite a bit here as uh, the young man from Brawley is really breathing heavy there. And only 30 seconds to go here in the second period. It is Brian Grubbs from La Costa Canyon. The Mavericks leading 5 nothing over the number one seed, Steve Elizalde. Elizalde, the junior, he is the Division Three champion from last week. And there's the quick turnover, a nice half Nelson there by Grubbs. And he actually put, he actually put Elizalde on his back, but they went out of bounds. And there is no score, no back point opportunities because they both rolled out of bounds. 
and they will get back to the center mat for a restart here. And there's going to be a false start there on Grubbs, and they will do it again as the referee issues a caution to the freshman. And certainly, he has got to be excited and full of energy and just working a little too quickly. That time, the, re the start is good. And riding on the left side and trying to get an armbar there and trying to get a tilt now. And there's going to be some tilt points there as Grubbs turns over Elizalde with just five seconds to go before the end of the period. And then there's a quick reversal there. So two back points, then a reversal by Elizalde. He's on the board. Make it 7-2. to two. As we go to the third period. Actually, they're going to call it 8-2. to two. So it's 8-2. to two. Brian Grubbs, and he will be on top to begin the third period as Elizalde. It was his choice in the third period. And he takes the bottom position, and he quickly turns over Brian Grubbs. He gets a reversal, and then he puts it to his back. Elizalde has Grubbs on his back. He may have him for the stick here. He's in very deep. There's an opportunity for a pin here. Elizalde has really turned this one around quickly. He's going to get the reversal. He's going to get the back points. Grubbs fighting for his life here. He does get back to his stomach. But a reversal. Two point near fall. And it is now 8-4. to 8-4. to four. Brian Grubbs leads with 1.23 to go. And Grubbs barely, thanks to his bridging action, barely avoided getting pinned there, Jason. That brawly wrestler was very slick in reversing him and getting the three-point near fall, so a total of five points. That was... Grubbs needs to shake it out here. He looks like he's in a little bit of trouble. This brawly wrestler came all the way back. Looks like he's getting himself composed. It was a five-point move, so add five to the total of Elizalde. It is now 8-7 with 108 to go. Grubbs leads by one with just a minute to go. And then Grubbs is going to stand up and try and get the try and get an escape but instead he is thrown back down to the bat almost thrown back to his back if if uh, Elizalde would have gotten the back points there he would have taken the lead here but now it's Grubbs on the bottom just trying to hang on for his life with 45 seconds and there's the warning from the referee and justifiable warning there Jason yes looks like Grubbs is stalling out he's really he's got a point lead here and he's on the bottom this is going to be interesting the brawly wrestler might let him go here and try to take him down to tie up this match. Meanwhile, Al Zalde, refreshed and energized as he hops up and down. There's going to be a caution on Grubbs on the false start. Next one will be a point, Todd. Uh, he's already had a false start twice now. So the young man has to be careful. The freshman on the bottom. Elizalde on top. Riding on the left side. Elizalde's got to make something happen here. With 35 seconds to go in the match, he is down 8-7 to the freshman, Brian Grubbs. Grubbs working, spinning out, trying to get the uh, escape point. And he is, looks like he is going to get the escape point. No, a nice quick spin around there by Elizalde. He is still in control. Now Elizalde has to turn over Grubbs as we count down to 15 seconds to go in the match. And Grubbs holding on for his dear life. And he continues to try and work to his feet. But Elizalde riding him hard. And then he's going to try and spin him around towards the edge of the mat. And he throws the freshman out of bounds with four seconds to go. And if Brian Grubbs can avoid any points being scored against him in the next 4.4 seconds, Jason, he will be the Masters champion. He's got to watch it. No false start here. Looks and like there we go. It's going to be a quick stand up there and an escape. And the match is going to end on the escape. Grubbs gets one more point. 9-7. to seven. Brian Grubbs is the 103-pound Masters champion. Wow, Jason, what a way to start. That was a very, very impressive match. Once again, i got to reiterate, this kid is only a freshman. That's unbelievable. I remember a kid named Mark Girardi who won Masters as a freshman. He went on to be a three-time state champion. This kid has a very, very bright future. And here we go in the 112-pound division. It is the number one seed from Poway, Henry Yorba, the sophomore, taking on Chris Kirk, the junior from Ramona. Kirk comes in with a record of 43-5. and five. Meanwhile, Yorba with a record of 30-5. and five. Wrestlers on the mat, ready to go. It is Kirk from Ramona in the solid white singlet with blue piping on the side and the, the green Poway singlet with the silver. And a quick fireman's carry and a two-point takedown by Yorba. That was beautiful, Jason. 
two nothing. Henry Yorba leads. That was an inside fireman's carry. Very very slick. And he looks like he's got your. Or pardon me, he's got uh, Kirk in trouble here. And there's back points. There are back points. It's a deep, deep half Nelson. And, and it looks like Kirk could get pinned here and as he's got both arms flat, both shoulders flat, just waiting for the signal here. Yorba just came out on fire here and fighting for his life is Chris Kirk. Kirk is going to be pinned. And there's the pin. A 45 second pin for Henry Yorba. Yorba came out of the gate like a man possessed and he takes care of Chris Kirk with a 45 second first period pin. Henry Yorba is your champion at 112 pounds of the San Diego Masters. Poway's first wrestler of 10 and they get a pin. They really look nice out here. I mean, wow Todd, what can you say about that? It was unbelievable. It was just, again, the energy and the enthusiasm that Yorba just, the quick fireman's carry, then straight ahead to that hard half Nelson, turning him over, and, and Kirk, the poor young man, almost didn't stand a chance out there. Now we move on to the 119 pounders. It is Mike Hernandez from Poway, the junior, with a record of 34-4. and We'll take on Scotty Mahan from Rancho Bernardo. Mahan with a record of 38 and 5. He is a senior. Hernandez, a junior. And the whistle sounds. And they are ready to roll. Mahan with a solid white singlet with the blue and silver piping on the side. And of course, we mentioned the Poway uniforms. They are total green, kind of a Kelly green, and then the silver lettering. Mahan with the counter after, after the single leg attempt by Hernandez. Oh, nice. Nice little duck under there by Hernandez, and there's going to be the quick pike down, and nice speed there, Jason. That was a nice duck under, duck under and a hip heights, as we like to call it, and to the takedown of this Ranch Bernardo kid. It is 2-0 Mike Hernandez here in the first period of action over Mahan from Rancho Bernardo. A little sit-out action there by Mahan. He has his being ridden by... Hernandez in a potentially dangerous call and there will be a restart and it will be Mahan on the bottom and Hernandez riding on top and there's a nice little tilt there for Hernandez but no opportunity for back points as he continues to have a deep armbar there on the left side and Mahan with his head down on the mat as he is being worked over a little bit here Jason he is. Uh, he's just riding him very, very nice right now, this Poway kid, uh, Mike Hernandez. Uh, nothing special. He just keeps on trying to get that tilt there, and he's having no luck. This Ranch Bernardo kid's very defending it very well. He is defending it very well as he tries to create some opportunities there, and then there's a deep leg in there by Hernandez, and he's going to grab the chin of Mayhan and try and pull him over for a couple of back points there. That's not going to happen, though. But he does get it deeper this time as he sprawls out to the left side, working over Mahan. You see he's got the figure four to the leg there. He let it go there now. But uh, Poway wrestlers know how to ride very, very well. Cross variety ride there by Hernandez as he continues to work the leg in. And the first period is going to expire, and it will expire with Mike Hernandez from Poway leading Scotty Mahan from Rancho Bernardo. By a score of two to nothing, I want to let you folks know that tonight's Outstanding Wrestler Award at the Masters is presented in the memory of Jay Panacho, who is remembered for his work ethic, dedication, and desire to be a champion. Now, though all Jay, although Jay is no longer with us, his courage and dedication serves as an example to the next generation of wrestlers. And on the bottom, Hernandez started, and he's going to get up on his feet and spin away for the one point escape it's now 3 nothing. Hernandez as both wrestlers are on their feet now and a little throw by there by Hernandez and another opportunity for a takedown and Mayhan's going to spin out of it and almost put Hernandez to his back so good counter there by Mayhan who is looking to sprawl out and get a spin and possibly get his first points of this match as he trails by a score of 3 to nothing. Todd Selkowski along with Jason Hendrick here on KBCSports.com. Your home for high school sports. And there's going to be a stalemate as both wrestlers are going to come to the center of the match. 
looks like there was some type of uh, disagreement with the referees, and it was a one-point technical. So an illegal? Doesn't look like it was an illegal thing, Todd. I think, think maybe the Poway wrestler said something. Oh, so it was a, uh, something set out on the mat, and a point is awarded to the Rancho Bernardo wrestler, and both wrestlers on their feet here with less than a minute to go in the second period. It is 3-1 Hernandez over Mahan. Mahan working it as wrestlers both tied up in the center of the mat, working the center of the mat. One takedown, and this match could be tied up. And then a quick single leg there by Hernandez, and he's going to trip Mahan for a two-point takedown, and it is now 5-1 Hernandez. Uh, that was textbook. Nice little single leg and uh, front inside sweep and got him down to the mat. Nice takedown by Poway. Hernandez, the junior, who came into this match with a record of 34-4, and four, and he's going to be content to get the leg in on Mayhan and just work him over a little bit there and try and, again, sprawl out, spread him out, tilt him over, and try and get some back points. And Jason, how much does it wear out a wrestler who's on the bottom like this just being having the legs uh, ridden in on him like that? Well, it's, 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 a, it's a double standard on that one because not only are they, are they uh, putting the legs in, but he's riding the, the head in, in half Nelsons and whatnot as well. So it could really take a toll on you. You start to wear down. So you, you, you work the entire body, which obviously wears you out. Mayhan will take the bottom position to begin the third period. Hernandez on top. He leads 5-1, and then quickly an escape for Mayhan. It's now 5-2. Both wrestlers on their feet. 5-2. Hernandez leads here in the 119-pound division championship match of the Masters of San Diego here at San Isidro High School. Todd Salkowski along with former California State champion Jason Hendrick. One thing we know about the Poway wrestlers is both wrestlers work on their feet. All very good on their feet. Yes, they are takedown machines. Uh, very well coached by Wayne Bradstether. These, these guys are takedown technicians. Um, most of their points are takedowns. And just as we say that, there's a deep shot in on a single leg on the right side. The right leg is gotten and grabbed by Hernandez before he is tied up by Mahan and a stalemate is called. Both wrestlers back to the center of the mat for a restart. Working each, each other over. One minute to go here in the third period. It is a 5-2 lead for Hernandez. Each wrestler's got to make something happen, happen or a, a stalling could stop the match. And we'd be in store for another restart, Jason. This Rancho Bernardo kid is not out of it. He, he's just down by three points. He needs a, either a takedown to the back or even a throw at this point wouldn't hurt. Well, he's going to have to do something as it's 35 seconds to go on the match. And again, deep in on, on a single leg. And it looks like we're going to have another stalemate call here. It's 5-2 Hernandez over Scotty Mahan from Rancho Bernardo. Mahan came into this championship. He was the fourth seed, Jason. So he has really had a great tournament here to get to the championship. 5-2 yes. Hernandez leads. Trying to, again, get some points to add to his total. 15 seconds to go in the match. Both wrestlers on their feet. And there's going to be a warning stalling call against the Poway wrestler Hernandez. Mayhan now. Five seconds to go in the match. Something's got to happen here. Maybe a throw or something. He's going to try the throw and instead he falls to his back and an opportunity for back points and it's going to be a two point takedown and the buzzer will sound. Two points on the takedown. Two for the near fall. So the final score will be 9-2 to two, Mike Hernandez from Powell. A little too, little too late Todd on that one. Although I am, I am happy to see a wrestler go for it at the very end and try to throw for the win. Well, you absolutely have to. And folks, I want to let you know that today's wrestling championships are being brought to you by Tacos and Beer, the family sports bar and grill in Brawley. Great food, a great atmosphere, and large screen TVs to watch your favorite sporting event. So don't waste any time. Show up and let us show you what we have to offer at Tacos and Beer in Brawley, and that's the perfect segue for our next match here. 125 pound division. Roberto Castaneda from Brawley taking on Tim Boone from Poway. Boone comes in with a record of 35 and 7. Castaneda, a record of 38 and 4. He is 
the Division Three champion. We saw him last week, and both rushes on the mat as they get set here in a quick double leg shot in by Boone and Boone hoping to get on the scoreboard first he's got it in deep and he does get the takedown Tim Boone the junior leads 2-0 here in the first period of action 125 pound division Boone trying to tilt now on the right side again one of these brawly wrestlers the senior Castaneda sporting the mohawk as he is on the bottom and Boone riding on top here with 125 to go in the first period of action. A 2-0 Titans lead. Now the tilt in for Boone as he works over Brawley. Boone, and we should also mention, he was the, the CIF Division I champion last week and a Masters champion last year. So he really is one of the best wrestlers in this entire tournament. And he gets the tilt in and he does get a back point here as he adds two points to his total and has another tilt in there and certainly his game plan on Castaneda has been evident and set as three more near fall, po near fall points are counted off on another tilt by Tim Boone. This Boone is a tilt machine. He's gotten three tilt points for 2-2 two, two, and then now three. The score is 9-0 and here he is again. Another, another tilt. Castaneda needs to change his plan with regard to the tilt here. Unbelievable. An 11 point first period for Tim Boone. Nine of those points thanks to the perfect tilt that he just employed there. As we count down to 20 seconds to go on the match, it is Tim Boone leading by a score of 11 to nothing. Todd, in case you get sick of seeing this Boone, we have another Boone coming up. His brother is <laughs> next, Boone. who's even better than his brother. Well, I shouldn't say even better, but he's older and wiser, I should say. And again, it is Boone working the tilt on Castaneda, and Castaneda has to wonder to himself, what the heck just happened? After one period, it is Tim Boone leading by a score of 11 to nothing. The coin flip underway.